Hi, hello and welcome Microbe Hunters, Oliver here and I think it's a story time again. I just want to explain to you and uh, account, uh, recount to you a little bit how I used microscopes uh, during my university studies and when I worked in the laboratory. Okay, well, uh, if you've already watched my previous video on the use of uh, microscopes in biotechnology, uh, then um, there's a somewhere in the video, there is a link, okay, uh, to that video. Um, you, then you already know that I've uh, mentioned that uh, microscopes um, in biotechnology um, and in microbiology, genetics, biochemistry, well, uh, their use depends quite a bit on the research question that has to be answered. Um, and one cannot easily say that uh, microscopes uh, in in biotechnology or in microbiology have one specific certain use um, but rather it depends a lot on the research question so um, and because I did my thesis in bacteriology specifically in systematic bacteriology this is about the study of the um, evolutionary relationship uh, um, of different bacteria um, we used of course I also used microscopes uh, not as often as you might think uh, but they did play uh, somewhat of an important role and uh, I just want to explain a little bit uh, what I actually did and how um, I actually used the microscopes there. Well, first of all, uh, if you want to study the uh, re relationship uh, of uh, the evolutionary relationship between bacteria, um, it would be kind of nice if you could just take uh, the bacteria that you've grown somewhere on a petri dish or in a flask and it would be kind of nice if you could just put it into the microscope you look at it and then basically you can say um, if two different uh, bacteria that you found if uh, they are related or not that would be kind of nice i mean you know uh, that uh, you're even if you um, i don't know if you have two species of birds and you look at them then you know that they're still birds because they both have wings they both have feathers they both kind of look like birds and so on so you know that they are both of them are birds right um, so with the higher organisms it's it's kind of easy but with bacteria it's a little bit difficult because simply because two bacteria have the same shape this does not mean that they are related okay so that they could be completely different okay um, and uh, so microscopes in that sense um, yeah they only have a very limited value if you look at morphology however they play another other very important role in a different area that I'm going to talk about um, yeah, so that is one of the things uh, we call this morphology, okay, the study of the, the shape uh, of, of an organism, right? And uh, yeah, that's essentially one of the, the, the drawbacks of, 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 of microscopy or of sim not of microscopy as such, but maybe simply of, of bacteria and other simpler organisms that simply the way that they look really does not tell us anything um, what they are, right? Um, so, or only in very few cases at least. So this is a little bit of, a, of an issue because uh, we as biologists, what we want to do is, is we want to, um, uh, we say that two organisms are related to each other um, when they share basically the same common ancestor. So it's, we're talking about the so-called evolutionary relationship. So simply because uh, two people, for example, have, uh, I don't know, the same hair color maybe does not automatically mean that they're related, right? Uh, so that's uh, as an analogy. Um, and uh, so this basically means uh, that if we want to study the relatedness of bacteria, what we have to do is, is uh, the shape, the morphology is only one, one aspect, uh, okay? But actually what we want to do is, is we want to study the, the, either the DNA of the organism and then if the DNA is similar, then you know that they're more related or we can also try to find uh, some chemical markers or characteristics and then there are certain chemical issues uh, not issues but certain chemical characteristics and if the bacteria share these then you can actually say that they're more related and it's a whole big field of study um, and uh, that's basically what I've done mostly have uh, done uh, analytical chemical analysis of, of uh, bacterial components and those of you who know a little bit more about that uh, specifically what I did is I studied among other things the fatty acids that make up the cell membrane of the bacteria. So did a lot of gas chromatography work. Um, but uh, microscope di uh, microscopes did play um, somewhat of an important role in the sense that they're really important for doing a so-called quality check. Um, there is one big problem in the field of uh, biology or microbiology that, and that is the, basically the, the role of contaminants. 
Um, but because what we're doing is we're enriching bacteria in a nutrient medium. And if we're not very careful, uh, and if there's one bacterium falling from the air into the, um, yeah, into the flask of, of nutrient medium, what could happen is, is that this bacterium grows faster, reproduces faster than actually the bacteria that I wanted to study. And so what, it can, what can happen is that they quickly overgrow um, the original um, yeah, bacteria that I had in the flask. Um, and that is a problem because then I end up studying a contamination and not actually the thing that I wanted to study. Um, and uh, the question is now, is there any quick way that you can determine whether there are contaminants somewhere? And one of the ways is, is um, that you basically take a drop of the sample and you put it under the microscope. And then if you see that um, if your original bacteria, let's say, were rod-shaped, uh, yeah, elongated bacteria, and that, that's basically that you're working with, and you know that, and then all of a sudden you have cocci, which are round, circular sh shaped bacteria in your um, in your specimen, then you know that you're probably, you've got a contaminant, okay? So microscopy is a really fast and relatively easy way to, to check for contaminants. Of course, uh, it's not 100% because it could be that the contaminant has the same shape as the original specimen that you wanted to work with. All of these things, are of course, possible. We know that. Um, but at least uh, it is a very quick uh, one minute, two minute way to actually check uh, the quality of your, your sample. And if you actually see that there is a, a second type of bacterium in there with a different shape, then you already know, oh, forget it, I'm, I got to throw away a sample because I'm, I'm actually working with a contaminant. Okay, so that was actually um, on the everyday basis. This was uh, quite important, and for characterizing the bacteria, of course, once you've done all of your chemical analysis, uh, then of course uh, you also have to characterize the bacterium, and then you also, of course, talk about the shape. But again, as I mentioned, the shape alone is not sufficient to actually tell you uh, what it is. Uh, and now a little, um, and now a little story uh, of uh, something that I heard, uh, and it's a little bit—I don't know—we were laughing when I heard that, when we heard that, um, but actually, it's nothing to laugh about it's actually quite a frustrating experience for the person um, background information first you have to understand that um, I uh, was um, trained a little bit uh, more in, in, in the classical microbiology um, there is somewhat of or at least uh, 20 years ago when I was at university there was somewhat this competition be going on between the geneticists who did a lot of DNA work and molecular biological work and, and those classical microbiologists I mean there was some kind of this inside the university was kind of this competition going on and it was always like this some one of the things that kind of annoyed us microbiologists uh, was always the fact that the geneticists who all did the molecular biological work, they had all the money, okay? And this was this 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 modern uh, DNA science direction, okay? And um, yeah, we felt a little bit, sometimes a little bit, how shall I say, inferior. Um, however, there was one, one case, and that's the sad story now, where we heard that one of the diploma students who was working on a PhD work or a master's thesis, I don't know, basically was not able to produce any results for months, okay? So all of the, the DNA studies, all of the experiments kind of failed and didn't work. And at the end uh, of the of the one or two years of, of doing the laboratory work, um, they found out why, because uh, this uh, student, this uh, master's thesis student has been working with a contaminant. And as a matter of fact, it was not even E. coli, the bacterium, but it was something totally different. It was actually some kind of a yeast, okay? It was a yeast contaminant. So accidentally, this student continued to do all of uh, the experiments uh, with a wrong organism. And of course, you cannot produce any results, okay? The one that worked. And we microbiologists all of a sudden felt very, hmm, we felt so good about that because, yeah, if you would have just used a microscope, then you would have seen right away that uh, this couldn't have worked, okay? Uh, just Why didn't you just put your sample under the microscope? You would have seen that you would have actually worked with a contaminant, but you'd simply relied too much um, on your um, antibiotic petri dishes, and you simply relied too much that all of the other bacteria are selected away, and all of the other organisms are selected away, and so basically now you continue to work um, with a contaminant, which was not, which not which is not even a bacteria, but actually a eukaryote. Uh, so yeah, this was a kind of a little bit specific now what I said is, but that kind of made us feel very, hmm, yeah. F finally, we had our, how shall I say, uh, our way of, of, of feeling good about ourselves and actually emphasizing the value of a microscope, okay? Because that indeed would have been possible, a simple drop of the medium in, on, on the slide into the microscope and you would have seen that uh, essentially, yeah, you have a mixed culture and there's not only E. coli, 
not only the bacterium on there, but also some, some other contaminant uh, which should not be in there. And this actually would have yeah, been a two minute check and then you would have known and uh, you wouldn't have wasted months and months of work. Yeah, so this is kind of the, the, the sad story actually that uh, at that time it was actually, uh, we were kind of, um, yeah. It gave us reassurance that microscopes actually are not all that unimportant, okay? Um, so this was kind of the, the, the thing. Um, in other words, to summarize this, uh, microscopes for quality control are very, very important. Um, I wish you all the best. Uh, happy microbe hunting as always. Leave your comments. Please like and subscribe. Um, and uh, I also want to advertise, if you don't know already, there is, I do have two microscopy YouTube channels. And the other channel is more about microscopic observations. Uh, there's also a link below. So please also visit that channel. I wish you all the best. Bye-bye. All, all the best.